So I, uh, that's not my job here, but I, I'm a linguist by, by background, but also by passion. So I always look at how language works. So, uh, and I know there's people around, there's, there's probably a divided opinion about whether you should use a script in videos. Is that going to hurt both sort of being given as kind of almost like the obvious solution, right? No, obviously you should use a script, or obviously you should use a script. I have been, as part of our rapid movement session, I've been watching lots of academics and non-academics, lots of other different people recording videos using rapid move with and without scripts. In my experience, most people can actually, particular lecturers can speak fluently for 10, even 15 minutes on a topic they know well. And so the script often gets in their way. But sometimes script is necessary. You want to keep the video short. There's good reasons uh, to have scripts on occasion. So they don't always work. So I, but if you do have to have a script, maybe you're not certain how you want to go about it, how do you go about writing it in a way that it's easy to read and it sounds natural? As if, rather than reading out text, you actually, it's as if you're speaking. And it turns out if you look around the internet and, and ask this question of Google, that you won't find an answer. Nobody's done that research. Uh, lots of people will tell you how to format a script for a movie and how to make sure the characters you know, are, are structured and everything. But nobody talks about how do people actually speak in, and how is it different from when they write? So I did a bit of research and I've looked at, I've observed a lot of people trying to read out scripts where they find difficulties. I uh, had already done a lot of research on comparisons of spoken and written language. And I also look at some tools that perhaps might be of help. So there are three tips, there are many, many tips, but the three key tips that I came up with is, is to uh, have shorter, shorter chunks. And so often what you do in, in written language, you chunk things into sort of compact chunks uh, then, uh, so for example, some like business process improvement approaches. And that's really hard to read, it sounds very formal. So you want to insert some sort of a verb in there, something like approaches that can be used to improve business processes, right? So you want to have something that just sounds like, like and something you would say. And, and that's going to bring me to the next step is use verbs over nouns. Written language loves using nouns. So when I was inviting you, I may, I may have said something like in the email, upon arrival, you will attend, attend a building walk around or something like that. But actually, when I speak to you, is when you come, I will show you around the building. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to use verbs instead of all of those nouns. So that's, that's another useful tip. And then the other thing uh, that, that, that written language does, it uses lots of what's called, you know, some of you may understand, you know, the concept of subordinating conjunctions versus coordinating conjunctions. So written language uses subordinating conjunctions, like whereas, which, and, and, and so on. With spoken language, you often concatenate things together with and, or but, or or. So you would say something like, you know, George, the bird, and it flew away. So it often, but the problem is when you write it down, it looks very inartful, it looks like childlike language. So people are afraid to write like that. But that's how people speak, that's, that's one of the differences. And the, one of the other things that you, uh, because when people have this sort of the hard language, then you get there's lots of sort of pauses and they, they end up stopping. And, uh, and so, 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 so that's, uh, you know, so, so those are the key three tips that I would give to people. There's other two tips that are not on here, and, and which is, uh, which, uh, which, which is uh, do lots more pauses than you think is natural in reading, and then and the and the other one is um, is to have language uh, that uh, have more words than few, rather than more words than few, because you sort of have more words when you speak. Now there are some tools that can help you. So instead of writing your script, you can do the voice uh, dictation. Office now has dictation. Uh, Office dictate or Google Voice typing is really good. You can do it on your phone. PowerPoint, you can dictate your notes into PowerPoint now in the latest version of Office 365. But a much better tool is to, so this is what it looks like. This is what I was doing when I was testing this out. But a much better tool is to use YouTube, uh, and you can record yourself first, and then upload the video onto YouTube, and then get a transcript, download the transcript, and, and that transcript will then help you. You can use it as a script and read it up, and it will be much, much more like what you would actually say. But there's not even a better tool for this, because YouTube formats it as, 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 as captions, but there's a service called Otter, which uses the Google speech recognition engine, so it's the same quality, but it will just give you a really nice text. So I highly recommend, uh, recommend trying that. There's many more, sort of like, I'm gonna be doing more research on, on this, but this is just like some, some of the first observations. And uh, so that's, I did not manage to be on time, but it's, we got close. <laughs>